I lost my best friend, my mom, Lydia Green Ross. She was a doctor uh, to stage 3A uterine sarcoma. So that led me to actually create an organization to make sure that what happened to her doesn't happen to anyone else ever again. Lydia was a mother to my best friend and therefore a mother to me. She represented grace and style and humility and humbleness and I have no, I can't think of the words. She was the epitome of a child of God. She loved everybody that she met. She made you feel like you were somebody important to her, no matter who you were. She loved me as if I was her own child. And I just remember so many conversations with her and she was so surprised at how much Karen did for her while she was sick as if, I can't believe you're doing this for me. She genuinely was so amazed when Karen cut her hair and created a wig that she cried and couldn't believe that Karen would do something so sweet, not realizing she planted that seed in Karen to give back. She planted that seed to want to do better for the world, better for everyone. And that's why Lydia's legacy still continues. She started that and Karen is just carrying on her legacy to help others. That's one of the hardest things, I think, because it comes as a surprise to women who have it. Even if you've had your regular gynecological checkups and your pap smears and your mammograms, it's very difficult to detect gynecological cancers. I felt like a balloon on a very thin string floating and fortunately through other support and family and friends they tend to pull you back into the real world, um, as I called it, but it's actually uh, a new world because you haven't had cancer before and you really have no experience with it. You need to be your own advocate and constantly be looking for what's best for you and work in that partnership with your doctor. At first, I used to think of the doctor as the quarterback um, and now I think more of myself as the quarterback on the team that's taking care of me to determine what I think is best for me. I'm afraid that I'm going to not do what I need to do to make that difference, to save a life. Um, um, I'm scared that I'm not going to, I'm going to miss something somewhere that, that could mean something to someone else. Um, I'm scared of, personally, I'm scared of a reoccurrence, and I'm scared, I'm scared of losing my friends. It wasn't until Lydia went through this, and I learned through Karen, about all of the warning signs that were there. That's the legacy. There will be so many lives saved because of the work that's being done right now. I spent my mom's last few months with her. Um, I was her main caregiver and um, it wasn't as glamorous as people would think. Um, we, I, I'm so blessed that I had the time to spend with her one-on-one. -on -one. 
Um, there was a point where she told me that she was just tired and she was ready to go and she said that she asked God to use her in any way that he saw fit. And when she said that, I knew that that meant that God could take her from us and that was difficult with her being my best friend. Um, so I took that and um, decided that hmm, maybe God's purpose really is there for her legacy to live on and for people to understand uh, more about this silent killer. It's the fifth, uh, it's the fourth, sorry, it's the fourth cause of cancer um, deaths amongst women. Karen is one of the most remarkable people I've ever seen. This is a young woman who is focused um, because the family history that she has with uh, her mother. Um, and she has taken it as her challenge to make women more aware of the GYN cancers that, that are out there. These are often very hidden cancers. And the fact that she has committed herself to really raising awareness for all women with these types of problems, I think is a remarkable thing. Symptoms really vary specifically to what the typ typical and particular type of cancer may be. For example, with ovarian cancer, um, patients often will have swelling of the abdomen, they'll have really weird GI symptoms, and it's hard to diagnose. A cancer like endometrial cancer, these classically are women who present having gone through menopause, so they've not had any periods for a period of time, and then they start having bleeding that's unexplained. And fortunately, that's one of the reasons usually endometrial cancer gets diagnosed early because that early sign of postmenopausal bleeding takes the woman to the, to the doctor's office, as opposed to ovarian cancer where it's often quite delayed. If you feel these symptoms, bloating, abdominal pain, if anything that you know about your body isn't right, get help. Go to your doctor, ask the questions you need to ask. Do what you need to do. Don't be afraid. Be brave. The fundraising is really important. Um, you hate to equate those two, but you can't do the research without the money. And the grassroots is really where most of this comes from. The commitment that, that our patients and their families have are the greatest resource we have, in addition to national funding. One of the things that's desperately needed is a good test. So research dollars really can go to trying to detect ovarian cancer earlier because the earlier we detect it, there's a much higher cure rate. You never talk about ovarian cancer and now you're starting to talk about it. When I see people that wear teal, now they're wearing it for a reason. Karen and the board members, the amazing volunteers with Lydia's Legacy, I feel like have made enormous strides in um, raising awareness and educating um, the gynecologic cancer community. A lot of the survivors that I work with, I mean, they are, some of them are walking miracles with stage three and four cancers that um, they're a, a product of God's um, goodwill as well as great uh, new research and technology. But the truth is, as much as I'm in the living business, sometimes we still lose people and, and that's difficult. It always brings back, you know, the pain of losing my mom.